right, welcome now to the second lecture series here for the modern Middle East. It began with Saudi Arabia, and now we've moved north to Israel. We're going to be doing this in five lectures. The first lecture, we're going to talk about the prehistory of the State of Israel. What happens before 1948 will begin with Theodor Herzl's Die Judenstadt, Jewish State, from 1896, and take the story up to the summer of 1948 and the declaration of the State of Israel in the first of the Arab-Israeli wars. In the second lecture, we'll talk about one of those Arab-Israeli wars in particular, by far and away the most important, and that is the 1967 Six-Day War, called the Six-Day War because it lasted, not surprisingly, for six days in June. 1967, at the same time the Summer of Love is happening in San Francisco, Israel is fighting Syria, Jordan, and Egypt for its survival. In the third lecture, we'll look at the ramifications, both of 1948, but especially of 1967, the occupation of the West Bank, the Golan Heights, and the Gaza Strip. The resistance by the native populations there, the displaced Palestinians numbering well over one million, even upwards of three million. We'll talk about the first organized resistance under Yasser Arafat and Fatah, what eventually will become part of the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, which will carry out such attacks as the Munich, the 1972 Munich Olympic attack on the Israeli athlete. 1976 in Tebe hijacking, the Kili Laurel hijacking several years later, dramatic terrorist acts designed to focus world attention on, in their mind, the plight of the Palestinians. And then finally we'll end that lecture with the first Intifada, the first uprising in 1987, an Intifada that will give birth to a new organization bent on Palestinian liberation, that is Hamas an organization that will use tactics such as suicide bombing and which will call for a complete and total destruction of the state of Israel. In the fourth lecture, we'll look at Israel's 1982 decision to invade Lebanon. The reason was the Palestinian Liberation Organization had bases there and were conducting attacks into northern Israel. That invasion and subsequent occupation will give birth to a new terrorist organization bent on the destruction of Israel, that is Hezbollah, or Party of God in Arabic. We'll then look at the 2006 invasion of Lebanon, this time to deal with not the PLO, but rather to deal with Hezbollah, the creation of the 1982 war. Finally, in the fifth lecture, We'll talk about peace efforts at it from 1978 with Jimmy Carter, Anwar Sadat, and Menachem Begin, the Camp David Accords, straight through to 2002 and the so-called Road Map for Peace. The story ends in 2002 because there have been virtually no efforts at brokering a Arab-Israeli peace since 2002, although just this past week, Benjamin Netanyahu, the new Prime Minister of Israel, did visit Washington and met with the new American President, Barack Obama. So, during the course of this class, we may see developments, we may not, all those we're going to discuss in this fifth lecture. The obstacles to a lasting peace settlement are formidable. All right, so that's the next five lectures. Let's start now with lecture one from Die Judenstadt, the summer. 1948. The territory, which is now the state of Israel, was once part of the Ottoman Empire. It had been part of the Ottoman Empire since the 15th century. In the late 19th century, this part of the Ottoman Empire was divided into two provinces in Turkish Vilayet, the Vilayet of Beirut and the Vilayet of Damascus. The people living there were a mixture of Arab Muslims, the majority, 
Some Sephardic Jews, these are Jews that had been exiled in 1492 from Spain and who, who had been welcomed into the Ottoman Empire by the Sultan. You have Christian communities, Lebanese Christian communities that, who, that are as old as Christianity itself, and you have then a sprinkling of Turkish Ottoman official from Constantinople. What we're going to watch now is a documentary clip that will take us from the end of the 19th century, the time of Theodor Herzl's Die Judenstadt, all the way up through the summer of 1948. Let's go to the tape. 